to you if that's all right. Psalm 145 says this. It says, I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. And now I'm this next verse, I'm used to hearing it a certain way through most translations. I'm used to hearing it say, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, right? I like the NIV here, though. It says this, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Great is the Lord and most worthy. Now, we give praise to a lot of things, and some of them are worthy of some praise. We praise our kids, right? We, we, we praise our spouse. We, we, we uh, praise the chef who made that really good lunch that we're going to eat later today, right? Um, you know, we're thankful for them, and, and they get some praise. But our God is great, and he is the most worthy of praise. Amen? Out of everything else, he deserves it more than any other. And in fact, it goes on and says, his greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. So parents, tell your kids, people tell your friends, our God is good, there's none like him, and we get to praise and glorify him. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so we started this year doing that. We're going to continue doing it now. Let's praise Jesus. Amen. Here we go. All right. Yeah. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in all King of glory, the King above all kings. Yes, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. Oh, that you would bear my cross. You would lay down your the king. 
Well, good morning, everyone. We're so glad to have you here today. Ed, it's good to see you back, my friend. Good morning. It's good to see each one of you here at Exalt Church today. And I just want to give you a warm welcome and tell you that you're not just a number here, but we see you as a person. We see you as a life story that God loves and who God cares for. In fact, upon this cross, he gave his only unique son to die in your place. We thank God for that. Amen for his love and his mercy. Three things you can expect here today. You can expect God. The Bible says where two or three gather in his name, he says, I will be there meeting with you. And so God will be here and God will bring hope and joy and comfort. And then during this time, we're gonna hear God's word and you're gonna hear it in honesty. You're gonna hear it in truth. And so we're not gonna pull out some gimmick. We're not going to have a magic show and hide certain parts that are uncomfortable, sometimes there are going to be some uncomfortable things in the Bible. And the speaker is going to say, ouch, and you're going to say, ouch, but that honesty is going to transform your life. But here's what you're also going to expect here today. As the word of truth goes forth and honesty goes forth, it's going to come from a place of love, that we love you, whether you're black or white, rich or poor, whether life is going the way you want it to, or maybe life is messed up right now. You can find a fresh expression of God's love in this place. So thank you for being here today. Worship with us as we worship the King of the universe.
Jesus, the only one who could ever say is worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you.
worship you, Lord. We did this song back during Christmas. My wife has actually been after me a few times. Let's do it again. It just asked a simple question. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? And so there's a part of this. If you weren't here for Christmas, you don't, it's, it's nothing fancy, but I want you to answer back. When we ask these questions like this, do you feel the world is broken? Say, we do. So those things in the parentheses, those I want you, I want you to sing back, okay? It's a beautiful song. Just says, is he worthy? Spoiler alert, he is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark will stop the light from getting through? We do. And do you wish that you could see it all? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? 
blown away. Amen. Aren't you thankful for what Jesus is doing and what he's going to do for us this year? Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody beside you and tell them Jesus is worthy. Amen. Good morning, Exalt family. It is good to see you all here on today. Isn't he worthy? Yes. My God, I love that song. Amen. My name is Danetti, and I am the events coordinator here at Exalt Church, and I am here to share some very exciting news on an upcoming event, and that is our pastor's appreciation. Yes, yes. Now, we know that we have four awesome, amazing pastors here who work hard to make sure that they are being good stewards of God's work. And we want to share um, and show them some love this on this year. So we would ask that you, if you want to participate in this, if you would like to show them your appreciation with an encouraging card or gift or um, something that you just, a note that you may want to write to them. We want you to take that time and do that. And there are four mailboxes out in the foyer. You can place those cards, those gifts of love, those encouraging words in one of those mailboxes throughout the month of January. And what we will do is on the 4th of February, the first Sunday in February, which is going to be our Pastor's Appreciation Sunday, at the huddle, this is before the, the service that day, at 10, 15 a.m. at the huddle, we will present all of those wonderful cards and letters and gifts of love to them on that day. So we want to make sure you don't miss out on participating in this. So be sure, be here at 10, 15 a.m. on February 4th. You do not want to miss this special delivery. We will see you there. Don't you love Miss D? Don't you love her? She great. So good to have you guys. If you're with us for the first time, will you take a moment and take the Let's Connect card and fill it out today? Or if it's your second time, or if you have a prayer request or a change of address, or you want to sign up for an event, you can use this card to fill it out and drop it in one of the kiosks as you step out of the building today. 
Now, I'm so excited, I'm going to remember this week to remember to dismiss Exalt Kids. So if you have a child uh, K through 5th grade, you can dismiss them to follow the Red Church right now. They're going to go back and have an age-appropriate lesson back in Exalt Kids. If you haven't registered your children, there's still time, parent, you can step back there and register them even now and get them to have a great time in Exalt Kids. If you have a baby birth through age three, we run that the entire service, and so we have a great nursery staff back there as well. And then we're encouraging this year in 2024, as we encourage you every year, uh, to take a time to read the Bible in 2024. And so I was talking to someone this week and they said, Pastor, I, I, I don't read real well or I don't like to read. Well, here's what is wonderful. The Bible has only been widely spread out to people to read since about the 1500s. So it's a new thing to read the Bible. It's about 500 years old to read the Bible. Before that, they did what? They listened to the Bible. And so if you go to exaltchurch.com slash Bible, there are reading plans there, but there are also some video plans there where you can actually watch the Bible in video form called the Gospel, uh, the, the Bible Project, I believe, as well as our other apps like the YouVersion app that actually gives you a place to find the Bible and listen to it. So when I say read the Bible, I just want you to get into the Bible in 2024 and listen to it and, and read it and get it into your hearts, okay? So that's what we're saying there. So listen, we've had guys last year that read the Bible for the very first time and then someone came up last year and said, man, this is the second time I got through the entire Bible. We just want you to take that journey with us. Now, coming very soon, small groups semester is going to kick off again in February. And so we're excited about that. And so next week you will have in your bulletin a handout of all of the small groups we're offering. We'll be having a men's group, there'll be a couple's group, and there's some other young adult groups as well as teen groups and other things that are coming up. And so a women's group, Laura Pate, is going to be doing a women's group again this semester. Woo-hoo for that. And so you guys can sign up for that coming up very, very soon. Now, Exalt Church, we want to thank you so much that you are some of the most generous people that we have ever met uh, in all of our ministry. And Exalt Church, we do give you four ways to give. And so you can read that on, on the screen behind me, the four ways to give. So if, if Exalt Church is your home church, if this is where you call home, we ask you to worship God through your faithful giving, and we give you four easy ways to do that. You can use your envelope, postage paid, to mail that in or drop it into one of the kiosks. You can also use text to give as well as go to exaltchurch.com slash give and give online. We just want to make it easy to help you worship God in your giving. Why do we give? Because the Bible says that he has blessed us and given us everything. Every blessing we have from God. And so when we give God a tithe, that's 10% of our income and our offerings, we're simply saying, God, I know that everything I have, you gave it to me. And this is a tangible way for me to say thank you for all the blessings in my life. And so I encourage you guys. I have been uh, tithing since I was 17 years old. Actually, I began giving at 9 years old, but began tithing at 17. And my friends, it has absolutely transformed my life. It, it, it removes materialism from you. It removes greed from you, as well as it opens up the windows of heaven for God to bless you in ways that you can't even bless yourself. Amen. So that's a little snippet right there. You guys are going to have a great treat today. How many enjoyed Pastor Dad last week preaching on the storms of life? Well, today you get to hear from our associate pastor, Tommy Siegel, as he comes and preaches a message today on why. And so will you stand your feet and give Tommy a warm, exalt church welcome. Give it up for Pastor Tommy Siegel. Well, good morning, good morning. It is awesome to see you all at Exalt Church. How are we this morning? Doing great, I hope. Like I said, it is phenomenal to see you. Happy New Year to you. This is the first time I've been able to address the whole church and say Happy New Year. Um, it's so good to be with you this morning. Did that worship bless your heart? 
That was absolutely amazing. I was back there just torn up. What an awesome time in worship. This morning, I want to answer the question, why? That's a pretty big question, ain't it? Why? Uh, And today, I'm going to navigate the question, why? Why what? Why what, Pastor Tommy? Well, we're going to get into that. Um, You know, this message came to me over a couple different events But I'll start with this. Liam Ryan, our four-year-old Liam, comes into our bedroom. And he's alongside the bed. We're sitting up. And he says to us, Mom and Daddy, I'm going to die. Now, immediately, you're paused like, wait a minute, what did you drink? What did you eat? What did you get into? What is going on here? There's this moment of just sheer fear, shock, what are you talking about, boy? Followed by, Lily's going to die. Logan's going to die. Mama's going to die. And Daddy's going to die. It was not in that order, by the way. <laughs> you notice I'm living the longest. But in, in this moment, I'm just completely frozen. Why? Why are we going to die, Liam? Why? Why are we going to die? Here I am, a grown man, 45 years old, asking a four-year-old, why am I going to die? Why? We all have these questions in our life. Why? Why are there storms? Why are there emergencies? Why is there death? Why is there loss? Why is there hurt? We continuously and constantly ask the question, why? You know, when I was a young boy, and I'm sure a lot of you, well, you may not have been a young boy, but a lot of you had the same question. You would ask questions like, why is the sky blue? Why is the grass green? To the point you're just like, stop. My parents told me to stop nonstop because I was somebody who asked everybody that I saw, why? Why are you doing what you're doing? If I saw somebody working on the cable lines, I would walk up and say, why are you doing that? Now, at the end of it, of course, there's the answer of I'm trying to provide for my family. I'm trying to, you know, move further in my career. This is a starting point. But I was more interested in why are you actually doing that? How does that work? How does that happen? Why? And I was extremely curious. And this actually has never left me. I continuously ask people why they're doing something that they're doing. If, if I'm on, you know, if somebody's on vacation, I ask why they're on vacation, what they're doing, what's going on, what do they need a break from, what's happening. I'm, I'm constantly asking people why. And this morning is my goal to answer that question. How in the world are you going to do that in 40 minutes, Tommy? Well, because I'm preaching for four hours and 40. No, I'm not. How am I going to answer that? Well, the the truth is, I'm going to answer that question in part. I'm going to answer that question in part, but I need us to answer a question first. I need us to answer the question, why? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we involved in the things that we're involved in? Why? And I'm saying to seriously search your heart and your mind. We ask ourselves constantly why things happen around us. Just this week, I was frozen in a moment of why. we just come out of Sunday night prayer. The leadership team comes together. We had an awesome time of prayer. Got home, got settled in, woke, woke up in the morning, 5 a.m. I got up a little bit early for me. I get out of bed. Now, I had checked the weather really, really close because I had a job starting Monday that was dependent on weather. But yet, I hear it raining. So I'm sitting here going, it's not calling for rain. So I open the door. Everything's nice and dry. So I'm like, oh, Laura's got that dishwasher on time delay. So I go running into the kitchen. No, the dishwasher's not running. And I knew for a fact the washer's not on. Nobody got up to do the laundry at 4 o'clock in the morning. So immediately, I think, did the kids leave the sink on? Why why is there water running? And I get upstairs, and my second floor is raining fire water. 
the exit line from our hot water heater had burst. And it had flown through, it, it had drained down through all of our insulation, down through the second floor, down to the first floor, down into our crawl space. How long it was running, I was not exactly sure. But in that moment, I'm like, why? If anybody knows this, I just went through a massive house catastrophe like a year and a half ago. Why? I just got done working on this house. I told people, I'm finished. It's over. The work is done. I can sit back and relax. Why? Why is it raining in my house? It's never supposed to rain in your house. Now, we are so trained in catastrophe, I'm not making this up, that within five minutes, I was in the attic turning off the water supply, and my wife had the rug doctor water extractor in the hall. And we were just steadily sucking up this water and moving to a solution. And I can sit here and I can immediately ask, why in the world? What, what am I doing in my life for this to keep happening? What is going on? And you know, a really cool thing happened. As I told you, I was watching the weather because I had a job that was starting that morning. And because of our vast experience in catastrophe, we were able to cut off the water. My wife was able to extract the water. While she was extracting the water, I drove to Home Depot, got three quarter inch pecs, crawled up into my attic, cut out the bad section, put in the new section, turned the water back on, got in my truck and drove away to work. And then the restoration crew showed up to take the job over from there. I get into Hampton and I walk into this job site and it's a complete house gut demo. And this house had completely burnt. I mean, it, I'm talking bad, it's a mess. And immediately in that moment, because you can sit here and you think, man, it can't get any worse, it couldn't be any, you know? And then I look at this and I'm like, man, what did these people go through literally losing everything. I mean, I lost, honest, I lost focus in my mind for a moment. I got caught off guard by a catastrophe, which is insane, but I, I did, and I can only imagine, what did these people think, or what were they going through that they lost everything? And navigating this, pulling this house apart, and seeing how destructive this fire was, I can stop in that moment and say, thank you, Jesus, and I did. Thank you, Jesus, that this is all that it was. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that we've gone through that told us, turn off the water, start sucking up the water, pick up the phone, call the people to come fix it. That fast. And immediately it went from this, woe is me, to thank you, Jesus. Why? We all ask this question. And this morning, as I'd said, I need you to answer a question. And the question is why? Why are we doing the things that we're doing? Why are you doing the things that you're doing? And I'm not just talking about bad things, bad habits. I'm saying in general, why are we doing the things that we're doing? This is going to take us looking into our lives. This morning, Psalm 139, 23, and 24, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to pray over you guys. Search me, O God. And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we doing the job we're doing? Is it to make the paycheck? Is it to provide for the family? Is it a starting point? Is it a stepladder? Why are we involved in all the different things that we are involved with in life? Dear Heavenly Father, this morning, I just pray that you opened our hearts and our minds, that you search us, Lord God, that you point out the shadows, the darkness, where we may came lazy, complacent, passive. Allow us to see, work on our hearts, work on our minds to follow and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Why are we doing what we are doing? And this morning, we are in 1 Peter 2, verse 1 through 12. I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to unpack this a little bit for you guys. 
So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by man, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourself, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct amongst the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. Like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. Verse 2, 1 and 2. Peter says like newborn infants we should long for spiritual milk. He is not saying that we are babies or infants in our faith, but rather that we should long for spiritual milk, God's word. We should long for spiritual milk, God's word. We must long for the word like a child longing for milk. Can I tell you that I'm all too familiar with this right now? (laughs) Little Lydia, this child, even when you finish that bottle, If there's an ounce left in that, you should see this face that this child makes. It is a face, and Laura says, here, hold the baby. She hands me this baby who is looking at me like this. She's looking at the milk, and she is longing for the milk. She is crying out for it. She wants it, and that's what it's saying here. It's saying that we should be longing for that spiritual milk, that we should be longing We, as believers, should be crying out for God's word, for God's truth. If indeed you have tasted, the Lord is good. Christians will long for the word if they have tasted the Lord is good. In in our conversion, we see that God is good. He is our Savior. It is in that moment of salvation that we come up out of that fire, we come up out of that ash, And he has saved us, that we are hungry, we are thirsty for more, that we're following him, that we love him, we want to know more, be more intimate in a relationship with God. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by man, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. As you come to him indicates a daily relationship with, from the time of conversion. In some cases, from the time of conversion, we are looking for that daily 
relationship. We're looking for that daily time in his word, in his presence. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Listen to this. God's house, i.e. God's temple. In the Old Testament, God dwelled in his temple. And you are being built up as God's house, that he dwells in you, that God is with us. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Listen, Jesus is the cornerstone. Ephesians 2 and verse 20 says, Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus being the cornerstone. The cornerstone in construction, it is the first stone laid. It is the reference point for everything else on that building. Being in a a strong history of construction, I know this all too well, that everything in that house looks to that cornerstone, that it directs everything from there on out. This is the foundation. You know, this morning when I said, have you been touched by the worship, I you know, it's funny, I didn't even get this message to Pastor Tony till after he laid out the songs. I will build my life, listen to that, upon your love. It is a firm foundation that Jesus Christ, can I tell you as I read this, I get so excited that as a Christian, Jesus Christ, that God dwells in us. Jesus Christ is our cornerstone, our foundation that we can trust and put our lives, our hopes in him. He is the cornerstone. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. The unbeliever stumble over Jesus. Listen to this. They stumble over Jesus and then get mad because they can't accept him. They stumble over him. It would be like if you came to me and said, how do I get to the store? And I say to you, the store's at the end of the road. But be mindful, there is a rock in the road. And then you stumble over the rock and get mad at it. Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the stumbling block for the unbeliever. The stone the builders throw away, Jesus is the foundation of God's temple and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Verse 11. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exile to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Sojourners. Listen to this. We are aliens. That's what this is saying. This is, we are aliens. You know, we as people have this saying. We say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When we go to another country or another state, 
What do we want to do? We want to experience life there. We want to do what they do. We want to eat what they want, what they eat. We want to do all these things. But that's not what this is. That we are sojourners. That we are aliens. It's to be like Christ, not like the world. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. We are sojourners. We are aliens. We are not of this world. As I had said earlier today, I'm not necessarily talking about bad habits, but more habits in general. The things that we are doing, the things that have become normal. This scripture is a filter. This scripture is the why. Why do we do the things we do? The reason we do the things we do is because we are a house, a temple. We have to run the things we do through that. We run the things that we do through Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. Does it line up? Are we aliens or are we residents? Are we aliens or are we residents in this world? We run this through this filter. What are we doing? Can I, can I be honest with you? One of the things that came to mind to me, I love concerts. I'm a concert goer. I've been to concerts my whole life. And this is what I've found of late. Now, I'm not putting anything on you. Your convictions are your convictions. My convictions are my convictions across the board. But I found myself in this situation where I'm at a concert, and this started to happen about two years ago to where I was at a concert and I was like, I don't like what's going on here. <laughs> I can no longer say, it's just music. And I started to pay attention to it. And more and more I started to notice the things going around, on around me. And now understand, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't get, cr okay, I get crazy. Everybody knows I get crazy! They call me the crazy uncle, I don't even know where that came from, Danny. But I'm the crazy uncle, that's what they call me. <laughs> so I get crazy and I like to have a good time. But I've been struggling and I've been wrestling with this here of late because I don't do anything while I'm there. I'm just enjoying the atmosphere. I'm enjoying the music. But I went to a Chris Tomlin concert. And in that concert, from the very beginning, the whole entire time, we're talking tears, an auditorium full of people, hands in the air the whole time, bringing us into the presence of God. And I looked at Pastor Tony, and I said, this never happens at a secular concert. I've never been at a secular concert and come into a time with God. But here I am completely engulfed in it. The presence of God in worship. And for me... I had to start looking at this situation. And what I'm asking you this morning is to look at your lives. What are we doing? Why are we doing the things that we're doing? May not be concerts for you. Maybe TV. Maybe the people you hang out with. Maybe the places you go. But you have to start asking. We have to start asking the question, why? Why are we doing the things that we are doing? So that's the question. That's something to take in, to roll around with. I want you to open your hearts, open your minds, look at your lives and say, why? I'm not telling you no. You know, a long time ago, I went to a church that said, the pastor said, I don't want no's all over the place. I don't want a sign that says no skateboarding. And I'll tell you, in my mind, I wanted to skateboard through that parking lot. I can't skateboard to save my life. I wanted to break my neck in that parking lot. But there were no no's. I'm talking about God see, searching your heart and your mind and pointing out these things. We're in a brand new year. It's a time we can slow down and say, wait a minute, where are we at? What's going on? The church. So this morning I want to talk to you about the church. Why the church? 
It's God's plan. It's God's plan. Expect God. Expect honesty. Expect love. When you come to Exalt Church, that's what we say, that you can expect to experience God. That there will be honesty, the truth from the word of the Lord. And that there will be love, that you will be met with love. Our mission here is to be relentless in our pursuit to exalt Jesus Christ. Share the good news and serve our world. Love one another and equip others to do the same. Let me ask you this real quick. How many people here have received a book, a message, an email from Pastor Roger Pate? Now, if you're a first-time guest, you fill out a Connect card, you're going to get one. Now, how many people have been baptized at Exalt Church? A lot of baptisms, a lot of baptisms, a lot of changed lives. How many people have been in a connect group at Exalt Church? It's a lot of hands going up. Why is this? Well, number one, let me tell you about the books, and I'm poking a little bit, but if you come to Pastor Roger with a problem, he's going to give you a homework assignment. Just a fact, but I'm going to tell you why, and this is the more important thing. It's because we care about you. It's because he cares about you, and he wants to equip you. He does not want to just say, I'm so sorry to hear that. Let me pray for you for a moment. I need to talk to the newcomer. He's saying, I care, and I want to equip you to handle the struggle that you're going through. Can I tell you that I was involved in a church that didn't do that? They would say, you don't have to know the Bible. Bring your friends. We'll tell them about it. But here, our job is to equip. It's right in our mission that we are going to equip people. I had a conversation with Pastor Roger not two weeks ago, and he said, you know, there was a time, and I didn't ask him about this, there was a time where all the focus in church was the numbers, how many people come in here. And he said, but you know what, Tommy? I care more about the health of our church, that we have a healthy church. Can I tell you that that's my heart? that that's Pastor Tony's heart, that that's Pastor Bob's heart. That is the heart of this church, that we care for you so much that we want you to be healthy. We want you to know the word of the Lord. The way I broke down this scripture, we do scripture verse by verse, and it's because we want you to know what the Bible says, because we know that it's the filter. We know that it's the answer to the why. That's why we do what we do. We are a church who cares about your children. We care about your marriage. We care about the next generation that comes through this place. We are a church that cares for you. So we're going to talk about Jesus, and we're going to talk about hard things. And there was a time where there were signs that said, we don't want any signs that say no. Roger says all the time, here of late, what time is it? What time is it? Now, you may be asking yourself, why would I go from talking about me, my favorite subject, to the church? And this is why. We are the church. You are the church. Romans 12, 4 and 5 says, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. That we are the church. You know, this time of year, there's great opportunities, as Pastor Roger talked about, the Bible reading plan. Read the Bible through with us. That started two weeks ago. You can start today. In two weeks, we're going to come into February, we're going to start fasting. And this is the perfect time. That's why I'm preaching this message today. I want to open your heart and minds. This is a time to rededicate yourself to the church, to look at your lives, that on Friday as you're fasting, you're going to be looking. And can I tell you, that there has been amazing revelations in this church during February fasting. There have been amazing revelations that people's eyes are open to things that are going on and massive change through Jesus Christ. 
There's great, this time of the year is a great time to look at your life, to get into the word, to get familiar with the filter, the things that you're going to run your decisions and your choices through. The Bible. The word of God. You know, I have to stop and I have to say, if I'm the church, when I walk into a situation, do people experience God? Do people experience truth? And do people experience love? I was in a situation some years ago that I was in an auction and I won something. And the person who was bidding against me was very upset. And he gave me the what for. And he spoke to me very violently. And he went and he went and he went. And then he paused. Just so you know, this pause was not so he could hear my feelings out. It was so I could open my mouth and he could punch me in it. And this is what I did. I paused. I paused and I thought, and this is what I said to him. I would never speak to you like that. Ever. And then I said, where I come from, no one would ever speak to me like that. In just a moment, he stopped and he said, I'm so sorry. And here's the reality. I brought God into that place in the reaction. I brought truth into the place by saying, no one would speak to me like this. And I brought love saying, you're worth more and you don't need to be spoken to like that either. And me and him actually became friends after that. You know, when we enter a situation, our first mindset has to be God, honesty, of that we are members, we are the church. This is not a place we come to. This is what we are. This time of year is a time to run everything through that filter. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the message. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the message because I didn't answer a question. Liam is standing on the side of our bed and he says, I'm going to die, Daddy. Lily's going to die. Logan's going to die. You're going to die. Mama's going to die. That's the way he actually said it. He's a mama's boy. (laughs) Mama's going to die. And we are truly asking, did you poison the food? But then I'm like, you're four. But why are we going to die? And this was his answer. Because they ate the fruit. Because they ate the apple is what he said, which I know is fruit. In that moment, listen to this. We as people, we as adults complicate stuff so much. We struggle and we wrestle. I never wrestled with salvation that when I accepted Christ, when Christ, Christ forgave me. He's God. I'm not. I love him. Off with the journey. But all those other questions, and here's the thing. Liam did not give his answer in fear. He gave the answer in confidence. A four-year-old knowing the answer to why. Why do all these things happen? Sin. Sin is the reason. But God God, Jesus Christ, is the answer. That in that moment, there was a separation, that there was a tear, that we were separated from God. And there was no way for us to get back to him. And then Jesus Christ, born of a baby, gave his life for your sin and salvation. I believe that right now, your testimony is more important than any other time. That when you step into a place and they see Jesus on you, you have the ability to change the mood, the room, and the world. Because no one else is talking about it. But he's right here in you. Jesus is the answer. Why sin? Jesus is the answer. Thank you for letting me share with you this morning, church.
Amen. Uh, stand, stand together with us. While he was speaking, this was on my heart. We'd sung this. Give me that. Uh... And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I tell you what, Pastor Dad and Pastor Tommy have ruined you. They have finished preaching by about 12.05. <laughs> Next week, we'll pick back in our Colossians series, and I will not have preached for three weeks. So bring your seatbelt next week, all right? God is in this place today. He is working. Rachel and Ed, I want to say it's good to see you guys today. Tony, reach your hand and lay on their shoulders, will you, right there. Father, I pray for your future wedding. Thank you, you got off the boat. And I just pray God's blessing that that relationship would be built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Amen. Richard, lay hands on your mama there from Harlem, New York. Mama Cita, we're so glad to have you here. And you can interpret if you want to there, Ricardo. We love you, Feliz Año Nuevo. That's all I know. And Dios Limbendega, is that God bless you? Did I get that right or did I cuss her out? I don't know. So, Dios Limbendego, four years of Spanish, I've lost it all. God bless you. We love your son. You too. May God bless you. May God's light shine through you. Amen. Rachel, is this your husband today? Soon to be fiance. Good to have you today. God bless you. Kenny, I'm sorry Alabama lost Saban. But you know what? Jesus is still Lord, even if Saban isn't coaching, right? Amen. Amen. Miss D, will you come over and lay hands on Miss Lorraine Rhea right over here? Can we be obedient to the Lord just a moment here? Amen. Miss Lorraine, you've gone through so much recently. You may be out of sight, but you're not out of heart or out of our prayers. I pray for your grandson who suffered a motorcycle accident and the Lord is working in his life we see that and we claim his life for the glory of the Lord I pray to recover health completely but I also pray Lord that you will capture his heart and do heart surgery even as his body heals and you will use him for your glory we thank you for this Navy SEAL wife who has served so much who has worried so much, who has prayed so much. We thank you, Lord, for the legacy of her children. And we pray, Lord, that her children, her grandchildren will rise up and they will call her blessed, but they will call her blessed 
Because to be a, to bless someone, you've got to bless them in the name of someone else. So I pray that we'll rise up and call her blessed in the name of the Lord. That they will know the name of their God. Her God. So we claim her children and her grandchildren for the glory of the Lord. I pray for John. I pray for Lorraine, Lorraine today in Jesus' name. Amen. Dina, touch your husband right there for a moment. Brian, I don't want to embarrass you, man, but when I see God doing your life, we're gossiping about you behind the scenes. We see what God is doing in your life, and we thank God for you. Father, I pray, may you give us more conversions like that. Lord, just continue to fan the fire in Brian's life. Now, there's other folks here I want to pray for, but I don't want to risk embarrassing you, all right? So I try to be sensitive to that. Amen. Amen. James, we're so glad to have you here, buddy. So thrilled to have you. Amen. Amen. Sing it one more time, Tony. I'll come back and give a blessing. I will build my life upon your love. It is a Guys, I'm trying not to do this. You guys, I'm looking at you and you're putting your head down. Don't let them call my name out. Samantha, wave your hand at me just for a moment. Put your hand on her shoulder right now. Lord, you know what Samantha needs today. God, you know her requests. You know every hair upon her head. You know the color of her eyes. You know every detail of her life. And the God of the universe who holds all things together through Jesus Christ, the Son, knows every detail about your life, Samantha. He's engraving your name upon the palm of his hand, and he says, I have not forgotten you. I know who you are. I know where you are. Father, I pray today for Samantha, for the needs that she has today, Lord. God, for her requests. The things she's whispered in secret that goes to the ear of God. Fight for her, I pray today. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Chip and Tracy who buried Mama yesterday. And as they're in Charleston, South Carolina, going through all of that, Lord, I pray you guard them from the dumb things people say. I do pray that first of all, Lord. Lord, we thank you for a legacy of 90-some years of a God-fearing mama. And we thank you for that legacy. And I pray you comfort Chip and you comfort Tracy today, Lord, and all the many decisions they have to make. Give them wisdom, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to let you guys out. You want to receive the blessing? Raise your hands like this to receive the blessing. We're going to pronounce the blessing. Are you glad you came today? Did you enjoy Pastor Tommy? Would you like to hear him speak a little more often? Amen. Stretch your hands this way. I will build my life. I wish we were so organized to coordinate all this stuff around here, but we're not. As I sat here, here is the verse that came to my mind. 
Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades, the gates, the gates of death will not prevail against it. Because Jesus came and died and resurrected the thing we fear the most, our greatest enemy, death, will not prevail against the work of Jesus Christ. And if death cannot stop the work of Jesus Christ, nothing else can prevail or stop the work of Jesus Christ. And I will build my church. It's not a building. It's not blocks. It's not wood. The church of Jesus Christ is built up of people. Tommy preached it. It's you. It's you. It's you. He is building you up. He is knitting you together. He is soldering you. He is hammering you. He is fixing you in line with that chief cornerstone. He is building upon the firm foundation and even the powers of death will not prevail against you. Here's the blessing. May God build you. May God build you up. May God so establish you that even the gates of Hades and the gates of death will not prevail against you. Build your church, Lord, and may the gates of hell never prevail against it. Amen. And amen. And amen. Turn around and give someone a fist bump. Turn around and give someone a high five. If you want to get spiritual, turn around and pray for somebody. All right? God bless you guys. Have a great week as Tony takes us out. Amen. Yes, and I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in